Then Wes Miller came to Cincinnati from UNC Greensboro, now in his second year running the Bearcats program. Lock in and Chiwa getting set to jump, and we are underway with the Bearcats first possession. Cincinnati played a defensive struggle their last game, beat SMU 54 to 52. Coach Miller loved how his team had to grind out a win. He said, it's just what I love as a coach. We don't want to turn the ball over 17 times again, but the fact that we don't shoot well, we don't take care of the ball well, and still win, that means we're a good team. Micah Adams-Woods running out of time, and that will be out of bounds. Touch last by Cincinnati, so hard luck for South Florida. Let's see if they're going to call the shot clock violation or not. Bulls lobbying for that, but no whistle. There's the Cincinnati starting five. DeJulius had the huge game in Tampa last year here with 24 points and a Bearcats win. Coach Miller only using two different starting lineups all year. Two weeks ago, inserted this big man into the lineup, making a big impact for the Bearcats. Odie Oguama. Started his career at Wake Forest, and he gets Cincinnati on the board. Bulls starting five. They've been with these five for the last few games after Bryant and Miguel moved into the starting lineup. Nice block by Oguama denying Chiwa. And Oguama running the floor, but Sam Hines Jr. with the block. Out of bounds. It'll go to South Florida. Odio Guamo, wonder what he can do, not known as an offensive threat with four double-figure scores for the Bearcats. But you know what? He'll put that one down, and then his defense on the other end. This is a matchup I'm going to love watching all night, and we're going to dissect it at multiple points. But there, USF have to be smart with the basketball. They did a better job protecting the ball in the win over East Carolina. Unforced turnover there. And now lock in the other way. Needs some help. Going to put it on the floor. And Bryant skies for the rebound. Selton Miguel to Julius matching up on him. And Oguama there for another board for the Bearcats. It'll be tough going against Cincinnati's size inside. One of the best defenses in the conference. Good note to USF really shooting the ball from three really well since conference play began. 11 out of 23 last game, almost 50%. Shot clock winding down again. Lock-in can't connect and Hines the rebound. These two teams split two games last year with the Bulls stunning Cincinnati on the road on a Russell Chiwa buzzer beater right at the end of the regular season. In fact, it was senior night for Cincinnati that night. Chiwa going to work on Oguama. Bryant from long range, and he hits the three. Keyshawn Bryant, 27% behind the arc. South Florida has their first lead. That's what will be available and a key for a USF win, Jim. He's trying to work the ball inside and go out and finding your shooter. Is that a little late in the shot clock? Don't want Chiwa handling the ball that far from the block, but it worked out well. Oguama again. Nice feed from Nolly, and it's 4-3 to three Cincinnati. So Oguama with all four for the Bearcats to open things up. Selton Miguel with the answer for South Florida. Talk about Tyler Harris, even Russell Chiwa was big in that second half. Selton Miguel not getting as much love as he maybe should be getting. Micah like Adams Woods off with the three, and it goes out of bounds. It will go to South Florida. Just looking here, big man draws a crowd. Someone's got to be open with three black shirts in his face. And then here, Selton Miguel just so smooth. Great mid range game. Can get to the basket as well. He's been in an always changing role. Same with Keyshawn Bryant when he missed a few games before conference play began in November and December, but they're finding their role now. Harris from way outside. Tyler Harris, 31 against Houston, 24 against East Carolina. 
That one ought to be worth three and a half from that range. One of my favorite things coming here about 90 minutes before tip is just watching Tyler Harris's routine and how he just gets himself in the zone. I swear, most of his warm-up jumpers don't even hit the rim. The three from Davenport, who just entered, and a foul on the rebound. This is going to go on Cincinnati. Victor Lockin will get whistled, and we're going to timeout. Tyler Harris from long range to put South. Best coaches you can learn from, uh, Roy Williams, who even last year got him to show up to a home game wearing a Cincinnati logo polo. And it's a great story where he's talked about it too and Roy as well saying, you know, Wes came to us and he said, well, what do you want to do in 20 years? He said, I want to coach. He said, you know what? Good. This is the place to be if you want to have that career path. Another rebound off the miss by Oguama. Cincinnati going into the Big 12 next year. The Bulls and Bearcats have been through numerous conferences together. It's going to be a little bit different with these two teams in different conferences next year. This is a long rivalry, a lot of games between them. This will be a tie-up. It will be South Florida basketball after a nice defensive play by Micah Adams-Woods. Let's take a look at the series history. It's presented by Coke. Cincinnati with a healthy advantage, even though the teams did split last year. There's that big South Florida win in Cincinnati at the end of last season on the Chiwa buzzer beater. Bryant from the baseline, and the Bulls have now hit four out of their last five from the floor. It'll be interesting. It'll be tough to get to the basket for USF tonight. The good news is they have so many guys that can hit long-range shots, and especially Bryant and Miguel. They can feast in the mid-range. Six-point South Florida lead. And Julius kicks it to the corner. Great defense by Hines not to jump and stay on his feet. Cincinnati can't find the shot. Contested three at the buzzer is good. Micah Adams-Woods has been devastating behind the three-point line this year. And he hit a tough one there for Cincinnati. Deep in the corner, the three by Harris, no good. Hines Jr., the second chance. And Cincinnati on the run. Nice, unselfish basketball, and it's finished by DeJulius. Top four-point four swing for the Bulls there. Sam Hines thought the defense was going to jump right away. And the Bearcats have that stout defense led by Coach Miller because they're smart and they're patient even in those tighter spots. Quick five-to-nothing run by Cincinnati. Chiwa can't finish against Ogawa. Here's Davenport with a three. And Hines takes the deep rebound. Taking it back all the way, and he's blocked, but a foul called. It'll be on Davenport. That'll be his first. Look how quick Cincinnati gets the ball up the floor. I know USF trying to collapse around the rim, but you also have to have more than one guy back. Three on one. What else can Selton Miguel do than trying to force that extra pass? Like you said, great teamwork. David Julius averaging about six assists per game in conference play. That's the most. Sam Hines Jr., 51% free throw shooter. That's another thing that went well for the Bulls in their win over East Carolina. They shot a much higher percentage than their season percentage from the free throw line. And even getting to the line 21 times in any conference game will help set the path for success. Because obviously you got to knock them down, like you were saying, Jim, as Hines splits the pair, or did someone go early? We have seen more lane violations this year than I don't know when. This time they're going to get lock in. So Hines, one of two at the moment, but has a chance to wipe that miss off the board here. And to finish the point, because obviously free throws mean you're getting fouls on your opponent. You also slow the game down. You can get Russell Chiwa some breaths here and there. He's playing almost 34 minutes a game in conference play. But it's also, you got to make them too. He's Cincinnati, a team that does not give up a whole lot of free throw attempts since the new year began. 
And the Bulls don't cash in on the second chance. South Florida by two. Josh Reed, freshman guard in the game for the first time. So is Dan Skillings Jr. Here's his first touch. Takes it all the way. Can't hit the up and under, but the whistles blow. And this will be a foul on South Florida. They'll get Selton Miguel. First foul on Miguel. Skillings averaging a little under five points per game. We'll get a couple from the line. Ryan Conwell checking in for South Florida, replacing Miguel. It's funny, just before the first free throw, you could see Miguel talking with his coach quickly, saying, come on, leave me in. I know it's the first foul, but no, get Conwell in. He's been such a great piece as a freshman. Here's why it's so hard to score against Cincinnati. Best in the league in blocks, top two in field goal defense, points allowed, and free throws allowed. Length and athleticism are a joy to watch this defense play. Just look how fast they get it up the floor. Good recovery by USF's transition defense. All tied up. Eight to nothing run here for Cincinnati. Here's Skillings Jr. Shot clock to single digits and taking it all the way in on the baseline. Dan Skillings Jr. He's made a difference since entering the game. A quick four points. Now, if you're Ryan Conwell, I mean, use that baseline as an extra defender. You can't let somebody walk right by you there. Cincinnati on a run here to reclaim the lead. Conwell into traffic. Sam Hines Jr. blocked. Great job converging defensively by Cincinnati. It goes out of bounds. Touch last by South Florida. It'll be Cincinnati basketball when we return. A little reunion before the game. Great to see him back in the Yingling Center with the Bearcats tonight. 92 tournament. That was Boise. That was Boise, yes. That was a great run for South Florida basketball. They went NCAA, NIT, NCAA from 90 to 92. Cincinnati by two here. And the short jumper is good. Bearcats really starting to heat it up from the floor, and now they're on a 12 to nothing run. Part of that action of just taking Russell Chiwa away from the basket. Not a lot of other height on this roster for USF. Credit to Cincinnati for taking advantage after a slow start. Kalu Azikpe had that hoop his first of the night. He's lined up against Chiwa now defensively. And Chiwa gets the roll. He had 13 and 5 in that South Florida win last February in Cincinnati. Maybe just more recently, Jim, on Sunday, he had 15 points in the second half at East Carolina. Open look from three. Dan Skillings Jr. with seven off the bench. Conwell trying to match it. Hines leaps in for the rebound, but it looks like he went out of bounds. Landed beyond the end line, so it'll be Cincinnati basketball. Also number 15, Corey Walker Jr. Brian Gregory's Bulls have had their share of hard luck this year. Ten losses by a total of 56 points. Played a lot of close games. And their four conference losses by 21. Same spot for Skillings Jr. This one doesn't go. Conwell with the carom. Cerebral play by Corey Walker just checking in, but tapping it to a teammate. And now Cincinnati basketball. And they'll kick it outside, start the offense to Julius. Averaging 14 a game has been quiet offensively so far. Reed to the basket, can't connect. And the Bulls pull down the rebound with Jameer Chaplin. 
That's so tough. You have to respect one of the best three-point shooting teams in the conference. Miguel lost the handle that goes off his knee and out of bounds. It'll be Cincinnati basketball. Like the move by Miguel, but previously, Skilling does a nice job burrowing in. And just nice baseline drive. He has been hot off the bench today. Even right there, just sitting there waiting. He's like that corner spot. He missed that last three-point try. He is really making an impact here for a team that already has four double-figure scores this season. Spin move for DeJulius, and he will draw free throws. Ryan Conwell is going to get the foul, and DeJulius, who is closing in on 1,000 points for his career, will get a couple of free throws. A bit over the 900 mark for him. Nice, steady force. All right, everybody knows this in college basketball. You're really going to win with guards. You look at some of the best teams. They're headlined by four generals. And Julius is a guy that for Cincinnati to try and make some noise, move up the net rankings, build some resume wins. It's going to have to be a key, not just tonight, but over the next couple of weeks. Bearcats now five out of six from the free throw line. Skillings with the quick hands out of bounds. Back to the Bulls. South Florida bringing in Corey Walker, as you mentioned, Sean. He did not get in the game against East Carolina last time out. So his first minutes in a couple of games for South Florida. Had a costly technical foul at Houston, a game that was really back and forth, but opened up after a tough mistake by him. Hopefully he learns from it. He's really had some big games this season. He'll need one, too, down low. Chaplin off the glass from straight on. Not sure he drew it up that way, but counts for two. And South Florida back within five. Now, Walker being on the floor allows the Bulls to give Chiwa a couple of minutes rest. You talked about his minutes, 30 a game for the season. More than that in conference. There's Landers Nolly the second, the Memphis transfer, hitting the three. He had 33 against Arizona earlier this season. Conwell, right place, right time. Just as Miguel was about to lose his balance, Conwell flashed on the baseline and hits the shot. In our last possession, Coach Gregory not fond of Nolly getting that good of a look. That's how you're going to have to fight through every single screen. He's the best three-point shooter in terms of percentage throughout conference play. He had a hand in his face all night. DeJulius connects. And Cincinnati shooting the ball very well after a cold start. They're up around 50% for the half now. Walker with a three. Out of bounds it goes. It will be Cincinnati basketball. Bearcats starting to open up a little bit, leading the Bulls by eight. Never know where the damage is coming from when you're playing this Cincinnati team. And the Julius already with four of those six assists. So you love, but again, that, that's kind of that Carolina mold, right? Wes Miller using it to perfection. Shout out to him. You know, he talked about moving to the Big 12 next year. Signed an extension last month. That just shows the obvious confidence. I know it's a second year, and you don't want to panic one way or another, even after the Bearcats did make the NCAA tournament last year. But Cincinnati, one of the historically great programs, they obviously have high expectations for where they want to be the next couple of seasons. Tyler Harris trying to lobby for an offensive foul, but he gets whistled for the personal. And he gets the shot clock reset and the basketball. Julius into the paint. Boy, that is one tough fadeaway. Selton Miguel just kind of did a double take looking at the Julius coming up the floor after that shot. And yeah, you just respect that. That late in the shot clock on a step back going away from the basket. Not Chihuahua. that a defender can do. Chiwa has re-entered. A lot of dribbling for the big guy. And he comes up empty as Oguama stands his ground. Defense! 
Bearcats by 10. Cincinnati four and two in the league. DeJulius is on fire. David DeJulius with three more. And South Florida wants a timeout. Well, he had a great game in this building last year with 24 points and a Bearcats win over South Florida. And he is on fire again. Started two of nine from the floor. We're just out of rhythm. USF jumped on top of that. And since they just can't seem to miss. Remember, it started with the Adams Woods three at the shot clock buzzer. That's just what makes Cincinnati so tough to defend. They have all those options on the front of that. It really takes a full 30 seconds to get a stop. Selton Miguel kicks it off to Harris. He hit the long three and has been quiet since then. He'll draw the contact with Micah Adams Woods, and that'll be a foul on the Bearcats. Third team foul. So South Florida will have an out of bounds play. Keyshawn Bryant has re entered. And a lot of minutes in this first half for Corey Walker Jr., who remains on the floor, even with Chiwa returning. Especially after not playing on Sunday, it'll be a big test to see how he can work his way back into the rotation, try to earn more minutes late in conference play. Harris cut off on the baseline. Shot clock running down. Miguel sees it, beats the clock, and hits the play. Selton Miguel with one on the shot clock for South Florida. To Julius to work again. Davenport, tough catch on that pass in the corner. And what a great effort on the save by Nolly, and it results in three points. Well, Davenport gets the three, but Landers Nolly, the second, kept that play alive with a hustling save on the baseline. And no second chances for the Bulls in this first half. Guama with another rebound. Cincinnati just a step quicker. Just a little bit smarter. They've made very few mistakes in this first half. Ten to shoot for the Bearcats. Boy, if you hit shots like that, I don't know what you do defensively. Landers now lead the second. Step back, fade away, baseline jumper. Oh, he is, he's in his bag right now, Jim. He had some words for the USF bench, too. I don't think they have an answer at the moment. Look at the shooting for Cincinnati, over 50%. Chiwa trying to bring it inside, dribbled it off his foot. That'll be a turnover for South Florida. Bearcats have hit six of their last seven shots. And Brian Gregory's team, which prides themselves on their defense, has had their hands full in this first half. There's the latest Cincinnati run at 12 to 2 in the last four plus minutes. Davenport for three. And Cincinnati is just raining shots right now. There's six out of 12 behind the arc. And the whistles blow. South Florida is going to take another time out. And that look on the face of Jeremiah Davenport says it all. The pop showing out tonight and I suspect they will be here Saturday for the war on I-4 against UCF as well. Brian Gregory's team right now trying to figure out a way to cool down these Bearcats though. There's Keyshawn Bryant hits the shot draws the foul chance for a three-point play for Bryant. Just the second basket in the last four plus minutes for the Bulls offense. They're finding some success on this side of the floor, Jim. Some of it is dribble penetration. Something Miguel hit that other shot over that four minute span. Like, right, you're going to need to score to get back from the 17 point deficit. Here's a chance. And a three for Harris. Hines got the offensive board, and the Bulls wind up with a five point play in that sequence. To cool down the Bearcats at least a little bit here at 38 24. That's what I was going to say. You have to start getting after it on this end. 
Draw a line in the sand somewhere. This offense is getting whatever it wants. Jumper no good by Nolly. Reed had a hand on the rebound, can't control it. And South Florida a chance to go on a little run now. Miguel. And the rebound taken by the Bearcats. Miguel, a capable three-point shooter. I'm not sure that's the one they want, but the Bulls come back with a good defensive play. Bryant to the hoop, and he will get free throws. Uh, we've talked about it before. Nobody on this South Florida team can leap like Keyshawn Bryant. He's had a number of highlight reel dunks. When he goes to the basket aggressively, he is hard to stop. Right, you think at some point, you think, oh, that, that's just what he does. We expect this almost every single game. Even Sunday at East Carolina, he had one that drew some oohs and ahs in Greenville. That's what you need sometimes, that big play, that spark. That can get your crowd back into it, that can get your team back into it. But once again, the free throws continuing to be a problem. USF now one for four as a team. One for five if you want to count that lane violation, too, where Sam Hines missed one. Bryant to transfer from South Carolina. And he gets one out of two. Cincinnati has led most of the way. South Florida trying to come back. They're on a six to nothing run. And Bryant slaps that away on the wood shot. Tough one on the runner by Miguel. And again, not the shot South Florida wanted on that possession. The second time Miguel has played a little bit of hero ball. And on the other end, DeJulius keeps his perfect night going. Five out of five from the floor. Bulls turn it over. Micah Adams Wood steps in. And it's a dunk by Victor Lockin. So the turnover hurts South Florida. And now it's up to 17. The points off turnovers developing into a storyline in this first half. What a play by Skillings there. So unselfish. One of the Harris best plays leaves of the half. It short. And Skillings the rebound. He has been a menace. The Julius will back it out. 13 for DeJulius to lead all scorers. Shot clock, single digits. Three to shoot. DeJulius in time hits the three. It has been that kind of night for the Bearcats. Buzzer beater after buzzer beater on the shot clock. And David DeJulius at the heart of it all. She was stripped on the way up. That'll be a foul with free throws coming. Going back off the turnover with Tyler Harris and USF fell asleep. Skilling's little touch pass. Nice throw down and then some shot clock cheese in traffic off balance doesn't matter Julius now six of six from the floor And Cincinnati now seven of 13 behind the arc Lockin got the foul. It was his second I, I can't believe Cincinnati scored 54 points just a few days ago in its last game But that, that's what something Wes Miller said to his team before tonight's game you know, we We're talking with the SID And they were saying, you know, don't take USF for granted. This team is so much better than its record Look at the four games that the Bulls have lost in conference play with five minutes to go They were in every single one and so that respect factor Whatever it is, this team came ready to play. As South Florida had a lead in all four of the conference games they lost in the second half. Skillings, everything except the shot in South Florida coming back the other way. Less than a minute to go, first half. It has been a clinic by Cincinnati. Shooting almost 55% from the floor. Sorrell Smith with his first touch leaves it short. 
to Julius on the run, gives it up to Skillings, and underneath he hits the shot. Dan Skillings has been terrific off the bench, nine points. Sam Hines Jr., the fadeaway good over Davenport. And a timeout taken with the shot clock now turned off. 20 seconds left in the half. 20 seconds left in the half. Gosh, it's hard to say. You can't script a better start than this. Execution on another level. He has some lucky shots, some good contests and whatnot from South Florida. The Julius running the clock here. Into the paint, Oguama has it knocked away. Sam Hines Jr. comes up with a basketball, and that will be the end of the first half. A shooting clinic by Cincinnati. Up 18 at the top. They were just the step quicker. South Florida, you got to be a little meaner. You got to be a little bit faster. You have to anticipate some of Cincinnati's movements. Yeah, they have size and speed. It's not easy going up against this type of team. But you have to have some pride in yourself, too, and say, you know what, I'm just not going to let you score. I hope there's some new energy coming out of the locker room. Bearcats start with the basketball. The three is up, and more of the same for the Bearcats. Landers Nolly the second with yet another three for the Bearcats, their eighth of the game. More of the same from the Bulls, too. You have to fight around that screen, too. I know it's not easy. You might get a Charlie horse if you're Keyshawn Bryant, but if you let Landers Nolly the second catch it in rhythm, that is going down almost every time. Tyler Harris, Bryant the three. Chiwa keeps it alive, but Cincinnati wins the scramble. Bearcats looking for their 14th win of the season. Memphis is on deck for them. She was going to get a foul, a nice feed, and lock in. We'll get free throws. Ball's found at the 54. Russell Chiwa, that's his first. I, his name, we haven't even called all that much. Didn't get a rebound. Only had the one basket in the first half. So look at the emergence and even just the options Cincinnati has this year. It's this kid that goes from four points per game last year as a redshirt freshman to boom, double figure score. It is so important to have that guy. Obviously, we've seen his defensive presence at times tonight, but it's the ability to score to make defenses respect you is what makes you so tough as a team. You see the numbers on Lockin. He blocked eight shots in the game against SMU. It was the most by any player in the American since 2017. Seal that win with this eighth and final one at the last second. Out of bounds it goes. This is going to be South Florida basketball. I can't believe a Mick Cronin team never had a guy with eight blocks. She was. Sean mentioned has been quiet offensively. So is Tyler Harris. Only six points for him tonight. Miguel working on to Julius draws the foul that might be Lockin. And if it is, that would be the third on Lockin. So the first Bearcat in foul trouble. And Lockin most likely headed to the bench. No, he's not happy. It kind of looked like he was just a bit out of position. Miguel on a tough drive again. He's kind of streaky like a Russell Westbrook where he goes on these drives and knows what he wants to do before he puts the ball down for that first dribble. And yeah, he, he's faster than a lot of basketball players, but sometimes he can telegraph that. And that's what Lockin was trying to do and block the shot. Cincinnati's had good success around the room, especially against Miguel, because they're guessing right on some of his tendencies. Two for two from the line for Miguel. Bulls trying to show a little urgency defensively here. A long way to go, but Cincinnati building a very solid lead here early second half. 
Micah Adams Woods, boy, a lot of room takes that right through the paint for two. And to your point, when a team has its largest halftime lead over a D1 opponent this year, you want to see, okay, how do you come out those first four minutes of a second half? Chiwa muscles it up against Oguama, draws the foul. Free throws coming. Again, it's a lot of the same. That double has to come up high. Chiwa, even off that second screen, cannot recover in time. I'd almost want to just stay six feet under, even around the free throw line. You know, Oguama is not going to hurt you from that distance. Even if he catches the ball, I don't have the confidence that he's going to drive right by you to the rim. You don't have to cheat that high up, even on that initial screen. Bulls now six out of ten from the free throw line tonight. And Chiwa, who had been putting up huge numbers, hits his fifth point of this game. Good news was he had 15 points in the second half on Sunday. Not just four or four from the floor, but seven of ten from the free throw line as USF used a big run. To get its first conference win. Oguama athletic move past Hines to drop it in. Now the Bulls trailed most of the first half against East Carolina. Went on a little run right by halftime to take a three-point lead at the break. Sam Hines Jr. with a good-looking jumper. He's got five. South Florida with UCF coming in this weekend. Davenport for three. And Harris skies for the rebound. Miguel to the basket. And DeJulius coming back the other way. Blows by Harris, gets by Hines, but can't finish. And here we go the other way, Harris. Feeds the ball to Miguel for the easy two. Nice transition basketball for South Florida there. And Miguel now with eight. And Miguel with that motor. Still playing tough even after a couple of misses. Oguama going one-on-one -on -one with Chiwa with the left hand. Odi Oguama. 21 point Cincinnati lead is Miguel working on to Julius and Davenport in for the rebound. And Cincinnati can take a little time here. Open three but it's too strong deep rebound. And Oguama again blocked by Hines. It'll go out of bounds. And it will be Cincinnati basketball when we return. They are getting some good play out of Odie Oguama. Country with Sean Kilpatrick. Not just a 1,000-point score, a 2,000-point score, only behind Oscar Robertson when he left Cincinnati. And even the Steve Logans, the Kenyon Martins, just so much history and tradition. That'll be a big part when they move to the Big 12 next year. This is a program that hasn't been to the NCAA tournament since 2019. They're hoping this group can find a way to spark a run at the end of the year. To Julius gets by Miguel, hits the shot, draws the foul. And David DeJulius continues his outstanding shooting night now, seven of eight on the game. Doesn't get much easier than that. You blow by the defense, and then just a bad foul by Miguel. Basketball Julius is good. You know, it's frustrating when you see your opponent just execute, execute, execute. You're a little bit smarter. Put yourself in a better defensive position on that catch. And now Cincinnati with its largest lead of the night. To Julius hits the free throw and earns a little break. He will depart with a game high 19 points for West Miller. Cincinnati in control here early second half. Chiwa fighting his way inside. The offensive glass has been very quiet for South Florida. There's the dunk by Kalu Ezekpe. Transfer from Old Dominion. 
And the Bearcats continue to hit on all cylinders. Miguel is blocked. It goes out of bounds and it goes off one of the Bulls. It'll be Cincinnati basketball. Will starting to come off a bit for USF. Miguel continuing to force a bit too much, especially out of rhythm. GY, even after his miss, just a little slow getting back, and that leaves a wide open dunk. Cincinnati's not letting up despite the margin. Now they're on a seven to nothing run and tack on two more as Landers Nolly the second hits again. That'll be a foul on Adams Woods trying to sneak in and take that ball away from Tyler Harris. Starting to get into a little bit of a dangerous spot. Already down 28, still about 15 minutes to go in this one. We just hope you see some fight, right? We, we saw it so many times in the game at Memphis where USF is in a real position to win in the final minutes, even at Houston. They end up losing by six, but that was a game going down to the stretch in the final five, ten minutes. How do you respond when everything's going against you? Can you still play tough? Can you still hold your defensive assignments, not play hero ball? Because right now, Jim, throughout most of the second half, we're seeing USF just dump it to one guy, and that's the possession. The ball movement that opens up their three-point shooting, which has made them one of the better three-point shooting teams in the conference this year. And the inside-out game with Russell Chiwa getting his touches, but it's just a little too slow developing, and an athletic team like Cincinnati's pouncing on it. Jameer Chaplin to the free throw line. Well, we talked about all the close losses Brian Gregory's Bulls have had this year. This is really new territory for them this season. They have not been on the wrong side of a score like this very often this year. Cincinnati can control the pace now with a big lead, but as Sean mentioned, they have shown no sign of foot off the gas so far. Another easy one for a zip pay off the feed from Landers Nally the second. Now 15 assists for Cincinnati. It's been a magic number this year for them. Walker in traffic. Chaplin the three, and he's got it. Jameer Chaplin with the three-pointer in South Florida takes a timeout. We go to break, 13.58 to go. Bearcats in control. One of the breaks here tonight at the Yingling Center. Three-time national champions. That's pretty good. Nice having that home court advantage, huh? He's going up I-4. Tremendous accomplishment for a group that is always out here supporting the Bulls. Night in, night out. Jeremiah Davenport kicks it back outside. Bulls had an early lead in this game, but Cincinnati is controlled most of the way. Running out of time to shoot, and there is the shot clock violation. So that'll be a turnover for the Bearcats. Remember, they didn't have a single turnover in the first half so that is their very first turnover of this game coming 27 minutes into play that's incredible like you're playing the state free basketball for nearly 27 minutes that's how locked in they've been well you take that stat then you add 57 percent from the floor and it's not a big surprise you're up 26. sam hines jr is still working hard for south florida He's got seven. See, but Jim, it just starts with that little bit of movement. Just swinging it across the floor. Even that from Tyler Harris. You're making life just a little more difficult. And Harris takes it away. Bulls force the second turnover. And then DeJulius will be called for a foul on their way up court. That'll be the first personal on DeJulius and the fifth team foul. Oh, an out of bounds play for South Florida. Checking in for Cincinnati, number three, Micah Adams Woods. Micah Adams Woods returns. Everybody is chasing Houston in the American. 
Cincinnati looks like they could very well be a team to be reckoned with as this conference season continues. Corey Walker Jr. with the hook shot. That's what I'm interested to see, especially in the next two weeks before we hit February. And then it's really full steam ahead for a lot of these teams because it's UCF, Memphis, and if Cincinnati can win a couple more, maybe beat Memphis over the weekend, they'll add their name into the discussion. But is the American going to be a one-bid league? Right now, that's how it looks. Skillings to the baseline. Again, the shot clock winding down. And the rebound taken by Walker. A couple of nice defensive sequences for South Florida. And now Harris with the deep three. Walker skies in for the rebound. Corey Walker Jr. is a guy who just is filled with talent. And for whatever reason, hasn't put up the big numbers for South Florida. But he'll show you a glimmer periodically. And we've seen a couple tonight. That'll be a foul on Tyler Harris, and that's going to take us to break. Bulls trying to fight their way back in, down 20 to Cincinnati. Seven and a half strong here tonight. Always a lively atmosphere for the Bulls and UCF. Free throws coming up for DeJulius now. His 20th point. Six assists, couple of rebounds as well. Right on that average for conference play. It was so big in a January 11th win against East Carolina. We said it at halftime. He hasn't really been shooting well, but what has he been able to do? He's been that leader of, okay, maybe my shot's not falling. I'll set up my other teammates. Against East Carolina, 12 assists, one turnover. That's just a great point guard. Chaplin with a nice move through traffic. Jameer Chaplin for the Bulls. Chaplin now with six on the night. Micah Adams Woods cut off by Hines. Ten to shoot. The Julius creates a little space, finds the open man, but this time Micah Adams Woods can't connect. Chaplin underneath, a little too far underneath, but a foul is going to be called. They're going to get Odie Oglama. That'll be his second, and Chaplin will get free throws. I can't believe Walker hit that pass in one of the tightest windows I've seen tonight. Chaplin spent much of this season in the starting lineup for South Florida, now coming off the bench the last few games. He has struggled from the free throw line this year, as have many of the Bulls. That's their sixth miss from the line tonight. One out of two for Chaplin. Cincinnati had this out to 26 at one point. Still pretty comfortable margin for them as we get the midway point of the second half. Lock in on the offensive boards and he will get free throws. Corey Walker Jr. will get that foul, his first. And lock into the free throw line where he shoots 54%. Just like you were saying for USF, how many times has that been a factor late in games where the free throw shooting has set it in favor of most of USF's opponents for Cincinnati? Right? If you're locking, if you're Oglama, you understand free throw is going to be crucial, especially in conference play, because you're going to have to be on the floor of late in games. And just because you have a team of shooters around you, you might be the one that gets a rebound late, and then you're going to the line as a 50% shooter. Nothing else. Good game experience to practice those situations. They obviously want to be up near at least 66%. Harris with the jumper good. Well, that's one of the reasons these second-half leads in conference play have gone south for South Florida. 
they have fouled a lot late in games and their opponents night in and night out have done a good job hitting free throws late in games it's been a big big difference especially in conference play Shot clock winding down once again, and Nolly just effortlessly hits the three. Chaplin was right there, and Landers Nolly the second didn't care. Yeah, Walker deserved. stripped on the way up. Here comes the Bearcats the other way. And the dunk by Lockin, another great feed, and that's a quick five points for Cincinnati on back-to-back -back possessions. But what is Wes Miller doing on the sideline? He's into the defensive stance. That's how he wants his team to play. Hey, we're not done. We're not celebrating. We're getting back. That'll be a foul on Micah Adams Woods. Look at this shot by Nolly. I was going to say a little bit earlier, this deserved the chef's kiss. His celebration we've seen several times tonight as he hit his third three and then lock in. Oh, what I'd give to have that kind of size. Like to imagine it was me in elementary school hanging on the jungle gym. It's got to be fun. Nine out of 18 from three point range for Cincinnati. As Lockin gets a rest and Harris hits the free throw. Wes Miller, a fun guy to watch in these moments. Again, you, you come from North Carolina, there's that standard. Cincinnati, there's that standard like we were talking about with all the history, obviously with Oscar Robertson and winning a couple of championships before the 70s. We look through early 2000s, Sean Kilpatrick, Jaron Cumberland in recent years. They must still be that upper echelon no matter what conference they're in. Nolly lost his footing, but a foul is going to be called on South Florida. It's on Chaplin. It'll be the fifth team foul on South Florida. Brian Gregory not happy with that call. And Wes Miller built a consistent winner at UNC Greensboro. Came to Cincinnati last season, now in his second year. Long three, but not long enough for Jeremiah Davenport, and it'll be South Florida basketball. Finally starting to regress to the mean. Even Cincinnati in conference play, as a team, they're shooting about 40% from three in their first six conference games. Not a big sample size, but it tells you enough when you've already played Houston. Also, this will be your fourth away game that you can trust those numbers that, hey, we're finding that groove and, and against our common opponents, we're thriving. That'll be a turnover on South Florida as we see Conwell checking out. Bulls have hit six of their last eight shots, but they really haven't chipped into this lead very much. Still looking at a 21-point deficit. Yeah, it starts on this end, too. Some of those transition chances that we show, like Lockins dunk. Now the foul's starting to rack up now, too. That'll be on Tyler Harris. Third foul on Harris. The Cincinnati team came to Tampa ready to bust out offensively after putting up only 54 against SMU. It was enough. They won by two in that game, but an uncharacteristic final score for the Bearcats. Look at Nolly create space. Can't get the roll this time, and Davenport's going to get called for coming over the top. That'll be a foul on Cincinnati. We go to break with South Florida down 74-53. Tonight. Led by one of the best trios in America this year. Those three complement each other so well. Such a fun team to watch. 50 points a game for those three combined. Sam Hines Jr. with the free throw. He had a double-double for the Bulls, his first for South Florida earlier this season. And he's heading that way tonight, 8.6 rebounds. Again, one out of two, though, from the free throw line for the Bulls. That's tough for Sam Hines. He is asked to do so much, really at the four. 
Still undersized and athletic enough to defend out on the perimeter, but he's usually up with the big boys. Here's Lockin playing with those three fouls. Fade away, no good. Out of bounds it goes. Back to South Florida. Look, we can talk about it being the margin right now as we get towards the final minutes of this one, but USF playing much better defense, maybe as a result of that, but also, like we were saying, when it was a 28-point game. I mean, it could very well be a 35-point game if you continue making those same mistakes. But they're playing tough, and they're making the shots a lot lower percentage than a lot of the open looks that the Bearcats were getting in the first half that built this big lead. Sorrell Smith able to save that ball, and it will go back to South Florida. Jake Boggs has checked in for the first time tonight. Had a couple of threes in the game against East Carolina. Lockin and Chiwa get tied up. And then Lockin throws the ball. And we'll have the officials sort that one out. Lockin thought that Chiwa threw him to the ground. And the officials coming over to give us the explanation. Yeah, now it was obviously the throw after the play. Chiwa didn't do anything couldn't really do much just because of the awkward entanglement of the two fighting for the basketball and so two shots and the basketball and Lockin departs now with four fouls after the technical Sorrell Smith hits both free throws yeah, we saw it earlier this game too Cincinnati gave up a five-point possession a little different where it was an and one and then an offensive rebound in three have To limit those things especially where there's so many conference games that come down to the wire Now the Bulls need points in a hurry here under seven to go Bryant trying to draw contact and the rebound pulled down by Davenport We've seen offensive possessions like that about a dozen times tonight just some questionable decision making where you don't have to take those shots that early in the shot clock. Obama is fouled and he will get free throws. Jake Boggs is going to get the personal. And Obama to the free throw line. There is Boggs who had two threes off the bench against East Carolina. Did not play in the first half of this one. It's nice for the Carolina kid to get his moment and provide a nice impact there on the road where it was really a back and forth game at ECU until the Bulls had that run at the end of the half and they built on that lead. First one good for Oguama. That's his ninth point of the game. Julius goes out too. I think that's the last we might see of him tonight. Big game coming up against Memphis at home. That'll be next for Cincinnati. Bulls will have UCF at home. Sorrell Smith baseline jumper. Bryant keeps it alive. It goes out of bounds. It'll go to Cincinnati. I know Wes Miller's not thinking about that yet. It was funny talking to a couple people around the program before tip tonight, just saying how locked in he is on this day but for cincinnati if you want any hope at making the ncaa tournament sunday's going to be a must win for them and take a look at that game on january 28th against number one houston what a great matchup that should be oguama blocked by chiwa bulls on the run the other way miguel to the basket and he hits the shot and draws the foul Miguel just powered that ball through the defense. He's got a chance for a three-point play Haven't loved some of his shot selection tonight, but what I do love is his effort He's not shy. He's not going to be deterred just because he was three for ten before that shot He continues to attack and he wants the ball Kansas State transfer And the rebound taken by Cincinnati Bearcats have not hit a shot in the last three and a half minutes. They're over their last four from the floor. Bulls have whittled it down to 17, but time getting short. And Skillings with another terrific play. He has been a major factor off the bench 
for Cincinnati now with 11 points. Keyshawn Bryant to the glass, and Bryant adds two more to his two. Just a sixth shot attempt, too. I think where he was those first few games of the year, he was kind of the alpha. He was demanding the basketball and taking the lion's share of the shots for USF. As you can see, him be a little bit more aggressive and want the ball because he's just that fast. He can cut into the lane so well. Skillings can't finish against Miguel in South Florida with another opportunity. Miguel with the runner and he scores off the glass. Bulls have this down to 15. And we're going to see a timeout on the court taken by Cincinnati. And the shooting just amazing. Seven out of eight from the floor. Very effective from long range as well. Two three pointers, five for five from the free throw line. Seven assists. The Yingling player of the game, David DeJulius. Yeah, he set that tone where even it was 10 to 4 and Cincinnati trailed early. He got his team in order and they went on that big run and they haven't looked back really up until this point in the game. The Julius with the basketball now. Nolly just glides in and drops it in. Landers, Nolly the second. He started his career at Virginia Tech, then went to Memphis. Now Cincinnati, and he's the leading scorer on the Bearcats. And the turnover by South Florida. By the way, talking about turnover, Cincinnati still has two. The least they have ever had in a game is three. That happened seven times. Most recently, the 2017-18 season. So the Bearcats with only two turnovers tonight, chasing a program record here with three. And the Bulls up four. Elena Cheneke with nine points to lead USF as they try to get to 6-0 and in the American. Landers Nolly the second at the free throw line. And the soft touch again. Has he hit the rim on anything tonight? I don't think so. That's how locked in he's been since we flipped the calendar to January. I mean, how nice is it to have four players who average double figures for your team, but to know that this guy, your lead guy, who has led you in scoring in four of your first six conference games, that he just shows up every night. And you can say, yeah, we're going to feed you the ball on all these screens and all these different actions. And you're going to be the guy to lead us to victory. It's just incredible to have that kind of weight on your shoulders and continue to perform. That's going to be foul number five on Victor Lockin. So he will depart with 343 to go. Lockin will leave with six points and only one board tonight. It wasn't his best game, but he was a large reason why they won at SMU. Eight blocks, had the one, his eighth and final one in the final second. And when you have depth, you have that luxury of, okay, you can have a bad night, right? It's a bad night. You have the technical foul, too, which I think is just part of the frustration of things not going his way, getting a couple fouls called that he didn't like. But you know what? You bounce back, you got to be ready for Sunday. Well, he did do a very nice job defensively on Chiwa who has only five points and three of the five are from the free throw line. So Chiwa with under four minutes left has only one basket tonight. Yeah, and to your point, USF is really trying to feed him early, trying to set that presence in the paints. <laughs> Cincinnati just said, no. Oguama and Lockin, like you were saying, are as big a part of this win as the guards that have put up these big numbers in the scoring column. Nolly with the left hand. Nolly and DeJulius have now combined for 39 tonight. There's Chiwa's second basket of the night. And the Bulls back to within 18, but time getting short. Nolly kicks it off. Davenport's three, no good. Miguel right up the center of the paint, drops it in, draws the foul. Selton Miguel heating up in the second half. Chance for a three-point play. He's playing the final three minutes like the first three minutes. 
He's not giving up. Stat padding, whatever you want to call it. Kid just plays tough. That's what I love about him. And even when he goes through those stretches where he can miss two, three, four shots in a row, he doesn't change that mindset. Now, there are different parts I tweak about his game. It's amazing, and that's what you expect from a veteran guard that transfers to your program, that he's not going to sulk, he's not going to walk back after missing a shot. No, he's going to continue running for you. Completes the three-point play. The Bulls go to the bench for Ryan Conwell, and also in the game is DJ Patrick. This is just his fourth appearance of the season and his first game since November. Inside it goes to Oguama. They kick it back outside and the whistles blow. And it'll be a turnover on Cincinnati, so that will be their third, which ties them for least in the game. They won't set the new record tonight. And the Bulls with the basketball. Well, Patrick is a guy that can hit a three. He's had ongoing ankle problems. And really hasn't gotten many minutes at all for the Bulls this year, but on the floor now. The breakaway, Nolly the second, drops it in with the slam. Landers, Nolly the second, now matches DeJulius with 21 points. Tapping off yet another big night in conference play. Six rebounds, six assists, too, just doing everything. Patrick trying to regain the handle is fouled. That'll be on Davenport. Cincinnati foul number 24, Jeremiah Davenport. That's his fourth. And free throws coming up for DJ Patrick. He hit a bunch of threes early in the season last year. Wasn't quite as effective in conference play. Had only played 21 minutes so far this season. And at the free throw line for the first time this year. So Patrick on the board, Doc Mwardar will check in now, replacing Jake Boggs. So Brian Gregory getting a look at some different combinations here with two minutes to go. One out of two for Patrick. Cincinnati is going to go to 14 and six. They'll be five and two in league play. Bulls will drop to 8 and 11, and they will welcome in UCF this weekend. Five to shoot. The long range three, no good. Oguama the rebound. The putback won't go. More work on the offensive boards, but finally Corey Walker comes out of the pack with the ball. Here's Patrick. Now Sorrell Smith. And the rebound taken by Landers Nally, the second. Cincinnati willing to play a little keep away here as we approach one minute remaining. If I'm Cincinnati, I don't judge the final 10, 12 minutes of this second half. As we get a timeout from Coach Miller. Just a substitution timeout, it looks. So Oguama yeah, going to take o a seat. Oguama is going to come out of the game and being checked on the sideline might have been a little bit shaken up. You can see him there getting some attention. Hope that's nothing serious. He's played a good game. The Julius into the corner with it. Adams Woods. Walker the rebound. South Florida has not beaten Cincinnati in Tampa since 2012. That's quite a streak for the Bearcats. Patrick's three, no good. Cincinnati can't run it out, but they can get close here with 27 seconds to go. Back home to play Memphis. Next for Cincinnati. And Houston waiting in the wings on February 28th. Cincinnati will take the shot clock violation here, so that'll be turnover number four. But it's one that Wes Miller can live with. 
I know he's not going to be happy. Kind of what I was saying a little bit earlier before Oguama went off. Don't judge it by the final 12 minutes. Look at the first eight minutes of the second half, too, and how you just blitzed USF out of the gates. And even right there, you're playing to the final possession. That's a tough team. That's a deep team. And that will carry them to more wins throughout January, February, and March as well.